Before you view this presentation, I'd like you to take a moment and just consider whether you've had any of the following conditions. A cavity in your tooth, gingivitis, gum disease, uh, whether you've fractured a tooth, whether you've had a root canal. Now I'd like you to consider that horses suffer from all of the dental conditions found in humans and a number of their own because of their different anatomy. So if you've suffered from dental disease or dental pain, you'll know that it can be incredibly painful, incredibly uncomfortable, and that you sought professional help or professional advice quickly. This presentation, Dental Pain, The Silent Menace in Horses, is presented by Dr. Shannon Lee. Information on Shannon and his contact details can be found by visiting the sites listed on the slide below. So looking at the slide, this is what a horse's front teeth or incisors should look like, or as close to normal as we can find. What you're looking at here is you're looking at the nice pink gum and the healthy triangle that comes down between each of the incisors, each of the front teeth. If you're watching this presentation, then chances are that you own or have an interest in horses. So, can you name the most common disease of horses? Okay, well, depending on what you came up with, let's have a look at the next slide and see if you got it right. So here we see the most common disease of horses. Not the most common dental disease, but the most common disease of horses. Around 70% of horses are affected. So what is it? Well, what do we see in the photograph? The gums are inflamed or angry. They've receded away from the tooth. We've got bleeding here. This is after we've removed all the, all the food material and cleaned off all the, all the bacterial load. So what is it? Well, in simple terms, it's gum disease or gingivitis. What we would refer to it as is periodontal disease. Perio meaning around and dental meaning tooth. Okay, so a couple of quick questions. Is this painful? Is it a welfare issue? Is it a potential nutritional issue? Is it a performance issue? And is it treatable? So I think you can agree that the answer to all of those questions is yes. On the issue of whether it's treatable, you'll see some photographs later on in the presentation that will show you the effect of treatment. However, this is a progressive disease. Okay, so the earlier we intervene, the earlier we diagnose it, and the earlier we begin treatment, the more successful the outcome for the horse and the less time spent suffering for the horse. So here we are, we're in the horse's mouth, we've got a clean mouth, we've got a sedated patient, we're using a speculum or a gag, we've got a light source, we've got a mirror, and what you're looking at here is a gap between two cheek teeth, and it's a gap that shouldn't be there. You'll notice it's much narrower at the top, okay, at the top of the crown, the chewing surface, than it is at the bottom, near the gum line. This is what's called a closed valve diastema, and diastema is just vet talk for gap, but it's a gap that shouldn't be there. So this is also periodontal disease. So a couple of things here, if you look on the left of the photograph at the chewing surface of this tooth, you can see the affected tooth and you'll notice that it's angled more towards the tongue than the other teeth and that the angle of the chewing surface is different from the other teeth. Because as this tooth has lost support and bone and periodontal ligament and gum because of the periodontal disease, the tooth has become mobile and painful and the horse is avoiding chewing on it. So looking at the slide, there are two lots of food here on this thumb. The food on the left is a completely different colour from the food on the right. So the food on the left is food removed from one of these diastema gaps before treatment, and the food on the right is fresh food, smells normal, and it's food removed from a diastema after treatment. So here we're seeing a dental probe. These are used to explore pockets or periodontal pockets, or diastema, diseased teeth, etc. And if you look at the end of that probe, you can see there's food material almost all the way along it. There's blood, the food's discoloured. If you smelt it, it would have a very unpleasant smell, much like the inside of your rubbish bin. That's the, the material produced by the anaerobic bacteria, so the uh, non-oxygen-loving bacteria that live on this type of food. So when periodontal disease is involved, there are several steps. The initiating step is going to be some sort of trauma or a gap developing between teeth, something to allow food to trap around the tooth. What then happens is the food is going to sit there, it's going to be static. Because it's static, 
bacteria are going to grow on that food and those bacteria produce enzymes. So why do we have enzymes in our laundry detergents and laundry powders? What do enzymes do? Okay, so enzymes, by their very nature, destroy things or degrade things or in simple terms they eat things. Right? So what is there for the enzymes around teeth to eat? Well there's gum and there's the periodontal ligament and there's the alveolar bone. And those are the things that are destroyed in periodontal disease and we don't get them back. So looking at this slide, we're looking at a cheek tooth removed from a horse. It has three roots to it. Two roots, you can clearly see, they're the white ones with a little bit of red all over them. What's the red? Okay, for those of you who said blood, it's a good answer but it's incorrect. It is in fact the periodontal ligament. So remember perio meaning around and dental meaning tooth, so the ligament around the tooth. So the periodontal ligament is what keeps the teeth in place. Now if you look at the third root, the one closest to you, you can't see it because it's completely covered in food. So this is exactly as the tooth has been removed. The food, which started at the gum line, has caused an erosion of the structures next to the tooth, allowing the food to eventually pack all the way up into the tooth and over the tooth root. So this is periodontal disease. We've lost all the support to that root on that tooth and that tooth now requires extraction. If we diagnosed this earlier, we could have treated it, saved the tooth and prevented the horse from suffering dental pain. Here we see a diastema or gap between teeth immediately following treatment. So what we've done here is to remove a little bit more of the tooth. We've been careful not to damage any of the delicate structures like the nerve in the tooth. And now the horse's tongue is simply going to force the food out. So we'll still have food going into the gap, but the food will stay fresh because it's not becoming impacted. Anyone who's seen this procedure performed will immediately understand that the horse has to have sedation for this procedure to occur. They have to stand absolutely stock still. They have to be free of pain. We've got to put a high speed burr in between two teeth and we've got to do this without causing any damage to the teeth. So this presentation is actually about dental pain, but the reason that so much of it has been devoted to periodontal disease is because periodontal disease, remember, is the most common disease of horses. If you own horses, there's a very good chance you own horses with periodontal disease. So if you haven't heard of periodontal disease, if you don't know the signs, if you don't know the symptoms, if you don't understand what's involved in diagnosing and treating it, then you need to find a professional who can help you. For dealing with periodontal disease in the front teeth, the incisors and the canines, one of the most effective ways that you can manage this condition after having a diagnosis from your vet is simply removing the food material several times a week and applying a product to kill the bacteria. Now the products that we want to use must be safe to use in our horses. One that's available here in Australia, made by Verbac Animal Health, is a product called Hexarinse. Again, you need a diagnosis because this is only available from prescription from your veterinarian, but it is very effective. This is a horse. On first examination, we've got a diagnosis now of periodontal disease. If you look, you can see the gum is swollen and inflamed. You can see it's bleeding there in the interproximal space, that means the space between the two teeth. And you can see that it's receded away. So if you look to the two teeth on the side, they've got, not perfect, but they've got more of a healthy triangle of gum coming down between the teeth. Okay, now we're going to look at another slide which shows the same horse following regular at-home care with hexarinth by the owner. So this is the same horse following treatment, and you can see the gums are much less inflamed. We've actually had gum return down between the two teeth. We've got no more bleeding and no more feed impaction. Okay, moving away from periodontal disease now to talk about other areas of dental pain in horses. So have a good look at the slide. There are several problems here. What are they? Okay, well, in looking at it step by step. Firstly, there's several incisors or front teeth that are not in wear. There's a large gap between them. There's some yellowy material brown and yellow material at the gum line on several of these teeth. What's that material called? Yet some of you will say plaque, some of you will say tartar, some of you will hopefully say calculus. The, the correct term is calculus, but all of those others are variations. So what is it? What's it made of? Well, it's a mixture of bacteria, food, saliva. Okay? So we need to have that removed just like we do in our own teeth. Looking above one of the teeth, you'll notice a very large swelling. It looks like a pustule or a pimple. You can just imagine squeezing it and seeing something come shooting out. And guess what? If you did that, 
that's probably exactly what would happen. So what does that make this? What is it? That's right, it's a tooth root abscess. So one of those teeth directly under that pustule is dead and has an infected tooth root. So certainly that's going to be a painful issue for those of you who have had a tooth root abscess, you'll know what I'm talking about. And it's going to be a tooth that needs either extraction or root canal. So is this a painful issue for this horse? Any of you watching this presentation ever fractured a tooth? Because that's what you're looking at. This is a cheek tooth right at the back of the mouth, upper jaw, in a horse. To the left is the horse's palate, or roof of the mouth. To the right is the cheek. One half of the tooth is sitting out towards the palate. The other half of the tooth you cannot see because it's hidden behind the mirror. But the tooth is split in half. This is what's called a sagittal fracture. So the tooth is completely in two pieces. There's been food material right up the middle that's been cleaned out. So again, is this painful? And does the tooth need removal? And the answer to both questions is, of course, yes. OK, is this, does this look painful? So this is what we call a periodontal pocket. Remember, perio just means around. So it's a pocket around the tooth. OK, so food material gets in here. You can see that when we probe it, it bleeds easily. It's inflamed or angry. It's a source of infection because, remember, we've got food material against this gum. That food material is growing bacteria. That bacteria is now in contact with the horse's blood supply. So where did that blood come from? It came from the horse's heart. Where's it going to go back to? The horse's heart. On the way there, what's it going to go through? It's going to go through all of the horse's vital organs. Okay? So it's going to take that, that low-grade constant bacteria load with it and deposit it anywhere in the body. So it's Russian roulette here. Okay? So there are lots of links looking at periodontal disease and the links in humans with low birth weight babies, early embryonic death, heart disease, etc. Here's a slightly tricky one. Can anybody see what's, if you stare closely at the picture, what's right in the middle of the picture in the mirror where the two teeth join and the gum is? If you got it, fantastic. This one is a bit tough. If you didn't, I'm going to show you the next slide, and this is another reason why worming is so important. So, go back and have another look at the previous slide. What you're looking at here are bot fly larvae, okay, and you can see there's six of them. Those six bot fly larvae were all removed from the hole in the previous slide, and if you go back and look at the previous slide, you can see the bum of one of those little bot flies wiggling at you. So, bot fly eggs, as we know, are found on horses' legs. They overwinter in the horse's stomach. So how do they get from the leg to the stomach? The horse ingests them or eats them, which means they go through the, the mouth, the horse's mouth. That's right. So when they travel through the horse's mouth, some of them will burrow into the gums and spend some time there before burrowing out again. And when they do that, they create these holes in the gum. They're not the only way these holes occur, but one of the ways that these periodontal pockets occur is actually because they're created by these botfly larvae. So again, this probe, you'll see how long the end of it is. And if you watch this, this is just going to be a series of these two slides back and forth. So watch the probe and watch it again. And then watch it come out and watch it go in. Okay, so that's going the full length of the probe. If you look at the teeth in front, where two teeth meet, you'll see small amounts of food hanging down between them. So this is just advanced periodontal disease and these teeth are no longer salvageable. They're going to need to be extracted. Earlier diagnosis and treatment would have meant that the horse would still have these teeth and that these teeth would be healthy and that the horse would not be suffering this dental pain.